Hi, I'm Peter Pomerantsev from the Transitions Forum at uh, Legatum. Have a very special guest today, Sergei Popovich, um, famously the leader of Otspor, that uh, the student movement that uh, um, helped get rid of Milosevic, uh, and since then has really become one of the key thinkers and consultants of non-violent revolutions across the world, the Arab Spring, so many other examples. But your latest idea, Sergio, thank you for being here, um, or your latest paper, um, actually says that we could use some of the methods that you have looked at in non-violent revolution in our battle against a very violent foe, against ISIS. That sounds um, ambitious. What do you? What on earth makes you think that that might work? Well, I mean, that's a million-dollar question, and very often people ask the question: you know, Could you fight Hitler with nonviolent struggle? And the answer is, of course, there was a momentum you could in 1934. But uh, with ISIS, it's it's really interesting. It's like how to fight non-state actors. We know a lot about how to fight state actors because we understand how the states operate and which pillars of oppressive states should be tackled in order to perceive the social change. But looking at this non-state actors and extremists like ISIS, I think we are. Well, this looks like a battle against the mosquitoes. While flying the planes, we are actually battling the mosquitoes. But what we want to look at is how the swamp got where it is, because the swamp swan spawns mosquitoes. So we really want to influence the swamp. So the paper we are, we are talking about is looking at the conditions that really help spawn ISIS. And this comes partly from our experience in working with people from places like Syria and Iraq, who started a nonviolent struggle, and then, of course, were expelled by ISIS from so-called free territories. General idea is that we want to look at the three different directions actions and basically vacuums because they are inheriting the vacuum. First one is vacuum of narrative. Second one is vacuum of delivery. The third one is vacuum of opportunity. I will start with narrative. There is a great guy called Suleiman Bakit who makes comic books. And the reason he's super successful and he's on a, on a ISIS hit list is because he fills up the vacuum where there was nothing. There was no Luke Skywalker or Batman or Superman. And now we have Arabic comic heroes, which make a kind of a role models for young people in the Muslim world. Guess what? That was the place where ISIS and Al-Qaeda were cool before. So one of the things is to look at the parallel narrative and develop a positive narrative for these young people because this is their recruitment point. Second, of course, is a vacuum of delivery. If you look at the conditions that are spawning Hitler's and ISIS of this world, it's always a chaos, hyperinflation, lack of basic services. When you talk with the people from Raqqa, for example, they say, okay, it was awful before and it is awful really now. But, you know, these people deliver. The people are, are following the traffic regulations. The people are not stealing because their heads will, will be cut off or something like that. So this me means order concept really worked for extremists and, you know, and, and the people like Hitler or ISIS. So thinking about how to help these countries in the transition to really develop a system that delivers is another point of view. The third one is, of course, the vacuum of opportunity. It's a question, why would somebody from Brussels go and fight, and but live in the country called ISIS, because we are always forgetting. We're talking about 35,000 fighters. This is one battlefield. We're talking about the 6 million people living there. What if nonviolent struggle is used to train these people how to disobey? What if they stop paying taxes? How the ISIS will fund itself? So the very idea here is to expand the battlefield to the nonviolent arena and use the techniques to teach people to fight this extremist where they are. And uh, it all sounds very abstract. Give me one example of it in action. I, I, uh, uh, I remember one of the things that stood out in, in the last piece you wrote was uh, about a woman in Raqqa. Is that, is that right? Tell me about yeah, it. there is a great female activist in Raqqa who is staging this flying protest. And flying protests are nothing new. They were used in, against Assad in Syria. This is called a hit and run demonstration. You appear, you make a selfie with a transparent, you disappear because this is a low risk tactic. And specifically, this process, protest is interesting because this woman is there and their group is there and they're fighting inside the territory occupied by ISIS and also at the outside. Another interesting example is how to use humor against the ISIS. Some of the groups, groups escaped from Syria who are now in Lebanon or Turkey and groups, of course, in a, in a, in a Kurdish part of the, of the Iraq were using mocking videos. And it seems that these mocking videos that are tackling the very ISIS narrative are super effective in drugging people off. And these people are really painful, far more painful than the planes. So there is a possibility for these people to organize. There is a possibility for these people to do 
stuff. But of course, you must look at the low risk tactics that things like non paying taxes, non buying in shops, the tactics of non cooperation, as opposed to going on street in protest, because obviously, this is a high risk and these people can be healed. But just give me, you mentioned the flying protest by the woman in Raqqa and the mocking videos. Just give me an example, just so I have something in my head that's a little bit more. Okay, cool. there is a bunch of people sitting in Syria now and or, or escape from Syria, and they're having a little camera like this. And what they're actually doing, they're making a video of the ISIS people, how they really are. So they really, what they do, they drink, they dance to the music, and then, you know, they just put this, this guy's mask and become super serious. They will put, give you a, you know, bombing belt, send you to do the explosion and then come back, enjoy their life and, you know, enjoy their, their, their mates that they took from a school or stuff like that. So it's really deconstructing this narrative of tough, hard believers and turning them into the real people who are earning money. And by doing this, this is exactly the thing we must think of. This is the battlefield, which is not explored enough. How do we fight this narrative? How do we deconstruct this? How do we look at how many people get money from this? Because this is the typical motivation that will drag people off, as opposed to the motivation that you are fighting their propaganda. They're having 40,000 Twitter accounts. You're making now 50,000 Twitter accounts. What they want is to get involved in this struggle the more you talk about them, the more important they they become. As opposed to this, if you show them as they really are, like, you know, the bunch of the corrupted people that are exploiting the people's misery and doing it in a violent way by arms, then you are far more likely to be successful.